Hi, and welcome to this week's and the first of 2024's look back at what's been happening in the market so far. And we're going to start the year off. We're going to take a look at the FTSE, what's been happening there since the start of 2024. Uh, a more positive note for the Nikkei. We'll take a look over at Japan as well. Then we'll take a look at inflation in Australia and what's happening to the Aussie dollar against the dollar. And finally, we'll sign off with some news about Bitcoin. So to start with, the FTSE 100 over in the UK, there were high hopes for the FTSE coming into 2024. But those hopes seem to have been deflated slightly after the first for a week and a bit of trading. So speculation was rife around the FTSE then last year. It finished the year pretty strongly with a couple of very positive, solid weeks. There's even talk, and I, I use the term talk loosely, that we could be looking at the 8,000 level again. However, so far, not quite so good. We've seen a steady decrease since the start of the year. The five-day moving average has been decreasing. January the 2nd, we were at 77.64. That was 76.80 by Monday the 8th. And we're currently sitting around the 76.60 mark. So is this just an anomaly, though? Interest rate cuts are now expected more than ever in 2024. As also expectations of potential growth in revenue from key components in scientific engineering and farming sectors, all of which led to those predictions of a, of a good 2024. Yet despite these thoughts still being valid, including the fact that retail mortgage rates are being slashed in the UK by major UK banks, again, another indicator they expect interest rates to fall, we have seen this decrease. But it's fair to say it's early days. Now a rise to 8,000 would require approximately a 6% rise. We've been there before in February of last year, though the rest of the year was a little bit bland in comparison. It's still possible for this increase and potentially a rise up towards 8,000 if we do see these strong corporate performances that people are talking about and these cuts to interest rates. So some are saying that they may need to be more significant as we pretty much expect two to three cuts this year. Um, so will they have the same impact? Well, I think when you look at it, falling interest rates more money in consumers pockets it allows corporations that have less burden on them to finance their their existing debts we would expect to see a bit of an uptick clear though inflation is still in play and in fact we've got us figures due thursday afternoon uk time which are well worth keeping your eye on okay so over to japan now and a bit of a contrast to the uk and to the FTSE, the nikkei has set a 21st century high now the chart shows that the nikkei 225 price exceeded 35,700 on the morning of thursday the 11th of january now the all-time high of 38,957 spot 44 was set on december the 30th 1989 so quite some time ago and that was against a backdrop of japan's economic boom of the late 80s and early early 90s. So what are the main factors? Well, unsurprisingly in Japan, the latest data show that annual inflation is at 2.8%. I said inflation is, is going to be a key driver again this year. That's lower than the last 10 values, which were all above 3%. And that's reduced fears of interest rate increases in Japan. As we know, they have a different approach over there historically, keeping interest rates very, very low, and also reduces fears of limits on the current economic stimulus policies. On top of that, we've also got the US inflation data out Thursday afternoon as well. So these have come into play and given a, a bit of a buoyant start of the year to the Nikkei. Now, if we take a look at the chart, that shows us that the price is an upward trend shown by the blue channel. But the price also overcame the correction period, that's the red channel, which can be interpreted as a flag figure. Now, on December the 7th, the price tested the upper border of the flag, which we're indicating with the first arrow you can see there. And on January the 4th, the price formed a higher low, which is the second arrow. On top of this, the price has also overcome the median line, which is the blue dotted line. That's all fairly positive, but the indicators are showing overbought, so it'd be no massive surprise if we were to see a pullback. That median line we've spoken about could help the bulls consolidate their position, and 33,800 can now be regarded as important support moving forwards. So a bit of a mixed bag there. Obviously, the start of the year pretty positive, but we could see some changes to monetary policy still there, and we could see that pullback. So volatility could well come into play, and don't forget your risk management techniques. 
So third we'll stay in the southern hemisphere and we're going to pop across to Australia and take a look there. And inflation, yeah, inflation again, continues to decline in Australia. And the Aussie dollar against the US dollar is testing some important support. So Wednesday the 10th, I saw inflation figures or the latest inflation figures out from Australia. CPI for the year on year November was 4.3%. Previous figure of 4.9%, an expectation of 4.4%. So again, positive news on inflation, much like in Japan. No strong movement so off the back of the figures as they were pretty much as expected and there were no major surprises there. Again, heading in the right direction, but nothing majorly significant. Now, the four hour chart shows that we're nearing important support, which is formed by the lower line of the trend channel shown in blue, within which the price has been pretty much since last autumn or fall, depending which part of the world you come from. The price has managed to push off of here already this year, but no continued growth followed. So a little bit light, shall we say, in terms of the reaction. Now, the highs of January the 4th, 5th and 9th form a sequence of falling tops worth taking note of. January the 5th, the price was below the low of December the 15th, but then rose rapidly, a possible sign of demand below 0.667 for the Aussie dollar. So the forces of demand are strong enough to prevent price from falling as we're seeing on the chart but they do seem or are they running out of steam on the upside now i think it's probably fair to say the price should be fairly stable up until those u.s inflation figures on thursday afternoon clearly going to be one of the most important bits of data out this week and one to keep your eyes on so obviously the dollar will be influenced by those figures that come out and hence a knock on to the aussie dollar but you know a reasonable start again so far to the year for australia and finally, we're going to take a look at a, probably a big piece of news for the cryptocurrency markets. Now, remember, cryptocurrencies are not available to retail clients in certain jurisdictions. You have to be a professional client due to the risky nature of them. But finally, the SEC has approved all 11 applications for Bitcoin ETFs. Now, Tuesday evening, saw a tweet come out um, from the SEC, allegedly, um, that they had approved these ETFs, these Bitcoin ETFs. However, that was quickly redacted along with a statement saying that their account had been hacked and they had in fact not as yet approved said ETFs. Just 24 hours later, they confirmed they have approved the 11 crypto Bitcoin ETF applications. Now, according to Gary Gensler, though, the regulator was forced to approve the applications. We think that's a probable reference to the recent grayscale litigation from, from last year and um, running into the early part of this year. So pretty clear, not necessarily happy about it. And in fact, he went on to sort of double down a bit on risk warnings, if you like, for cryptocurrencies and, and warned of the numerous risks, as he put it, associated specifically with Bitcoin. Now, meanwhile, the approved funds are reducing fees one after another uh, to win the competition for investors. We saw a bit of a bounce in the Bitcoin price on Tuesday following the incorrect or hacked uh, announcement. Not so much of a reaction with the, the actual announcement came out on Wednesday. Top of this, the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey called Bitcoin ineffective in a recent speech um, that he made. And on top of this, we've also got cryptocurrency exchanges are now unavailable in India due to new legislation over there. So not all rosy. Let's take a look at the chart and what does that show us? Well, the Bitcoin chart shows that the price reached the upper limit of the long term channel, which we're showing in blue. Um, but resistance could be expected here, that's fair to say. January the 2nd, we can see that the bulls try to break through the A to B consolidation zone but failed. On January the 3rd, there was an attempt at a bearish breakout, which we're showing with the arrow, but that also failed. A recent price action shows line A, approximately 44,400, now acting as some quite major support. Of course, the price levels could be pushed higher by this ETF news, and particularly if we start seeing, you know, large levels of demand for these funds. On the flip side of that, any push forwards, of course, could make us approach that psychological level of 50,000 per Bitcoin. That could well come into play, and that is going to be a key error if we do see this increase as it is such an important psychological level. Cryptocurrencies, we know, very, very volatile and very, very high risk. So if you are going to trade these markets, please ensure you use your risk management techniques. And we wish you luck for the week ahead. Bye for now.